Is Taylor Swift's politics finally hurting her popularity? Because, you know, you, you see a lot of people complaining about it, but are these people who were even her fans to begin with? 800-288-9227. Returning to the show, Scott Baradell, he does a lot of this branding, uh, marketing, stuff like that. Uh, you tell me, Scott Baradell, do you think Taylor Swift's politics are finally hurting her popularity? I don't really think so. I think, uh, as you said, I think this is mostly the people that weren't big fans anyway, um, from everything I've seen. Um, Taylor Swift is one of those people who has a pretty good finger on the pulse of her fan base. I think the fan base portion that are conservative or, or don't like her politics kind of separate that from her music, which they still like. So all in all, I'm not really seeing a downside for her. Right, and you just described me. I, I don't fit the normal demographic, but just generally speaking, I'm a Taylor Swift fan. I don't hate her. I know her politics don't agree with me, but I recognize my politics probably run counter to most of the people I listen to on the radio. I mean, what? I can only listen to so many albums by, like, Ted Nugent and, I guess, Muse and Smash and Pumpkins, Billy Corgan, sort of <laughs> on our team. Thank goodness I can separate the art and the artist. I wouldn't have anything to listen to. I wouldn't be able to watch most of Netflix. Ted Nugent, maybe. <laughs> right, right. Ted Nugent, uh, who I'm, I'm a fan of his, and he's a fan of mine. He's aware of the James Show. But uh, I always uh, find it weird how people can't separate that. And for Taylor Swift, she's really pushed a lot of people over that edge. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's certainly infuriated a lot of people simply because uh, she is so popular. People know there's influence, um, and Kamala Harris's campaign took advantage of it immediately after the endorsement with, you know, these friendship bracelets and taking advantage of, kind of, you know, some 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 things that that Swifties do to to, to line up with that, which was smart of their campaign. Um, so you can see why people would be frustrated uh, and, and upset at, at, and burn her music and all those kind of things. But, again, I think it's mostly people who weren't huge fans to begin with. Uh, it, this might have been different if it was 2006 and it was Taylor Swift putting out Tim McGraw and when she was a country singer and, and singing uh, those kind of songs. That might have been more like what happened to the Dixie Chicks when right. they, came out, they came out against uh, George Bush and it almost destroyed their career. Um, so uh, it, part of this relates to the evolution of Taylor Swift in general, from being someone who was a country girl, very apolitical, singing country music, to what she's become, which is this global pop icon that is can kind of do what she wants, it seems like. Well... For the people who do control their own brand, you know, usually you're not a pop star, you're a small business owner. Uh, how much do they have to worry about politics turning away their customers? Well, uh, you you do have to worry about it if you're most small businesses. I mean, if you're a restaurant uh, or you're most businesses, it's really not about um, the politics. And, and if you make it about the politics, you could lose half your customer base. So um, in the case of someone like uh, uh, Taylor Swift, uh, it, it's a larger than life situation and people uh, will follow her because she's her. In the case of a lot of businesses, if you're putting a Trump sign out outside your door or you're doing something that suggests you support the other side, um, you're going to, you, you risk turning a lot of people off. Not only that, you risk people review bombing you online and doing other things that could really hurt you. So you definitely have to be careful these days. Um, businesses of all sizes have to worry about that stuff. I always thought, just generally speaking, if, if you're a pop star or a movie star, just why bring up politics at all? And then I saw so much pressure being put on this woman over the last year or so to make a political statement. So she was just in a no-win territory from my point of view. I'm not saying I feel sorry for her, but uh, I almost feel like her hand was forced more so than uh, other celebrities. Yeah, I kind of feel like in, in in the previous election that that kind of the same thing that happened to The Rock. You know, I, I, Dwayne Johnson didn't seem like he wanted to get so involved, but there was so much pressure being put on him. Right. That he, he finally felt like he had to, and that definitely happens when you when you're uh, such a a big celebrity. This applies to big brands too. You can start to have uh, get this pressure that hey, you're too important to not have an opinion. But um, you know, as you said, um, these are if you're dribbling a basketball or singing or something like that for a living, there's nothing that makes you an expert on politics anyway. So 
um, uh, you know, you certainly certainly should have the right to bow out and not participate if you don't want to. Scott Baradell, tell them uh, the people listening what you do at Idea Grove. Well, we help companies with branding and PR. See, that's why I'm talking to him about branding and PR issues. Thank you very much, Scott Baradell. <laughs> Thank you.